Acts chapter 8. And Saul was consenting unto his death. He allowed it. Took part. And he didn't do that. He just held the clothes of the men that killed him. How's that? How's that a charge of murder? All you did is held their clothes. Imagine what your thoughts will be. Holy Spirit wrote verse 1. Was consenting unto his death. So Paul was part of the Sanhedrin. The council. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. That's a problem because over here Jesus told them in chapter 1 he says chapter 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the outer parts of the earth they're staying in Jerusalem the apostles are not moving so God says, Saul, I got a job for you. What is it? Move them. Okay. At that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Well, they still stayed behind. But finally, the church is now moving out of Jerusalem. It caused the persecution for them to be moved. Persecution brought the word of God. A devout man carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women committed them to prison. He broke in their homes. And Saul has an Old Testament zeal of God. The Old Testament told him, say, listen, if anybody comes in the image of God, anybody comes to proclaiming another God, you're to stone him. You're to kill him. Saul's doing right what he thinks is right. According to the law. So now we're going to see Saul who's under the law. We're going to see Saul change. Now, if you want to put the church under the law, what is the whole conversion and twist of Paul's life? If we are still under the law, we should be doing what Saul's doing right now. Going out killing these Christians. And yet, Saul now, unsaved, does not know Jesus Christ and religions as Islam as Catholicism, as Mormonism, has gone out and killed people in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. They are following an unsaved Jew. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So this persecution of Paul brings the word to go further and what's going on right now is how can i say it because we know the bible it's preparing paul for his three missionary trips paul's crime here getting the word of god out is preparing for when he gets saved and goes in the ministry field and Paul has no idea what he's doing. Paul has no idea what's going to happen in his life. But we already know. We got the end of the book. We see his life. So can God use an uh, unsaved man? Exactly. Pharaoh. He used them to drive Israel out of Egypt. Pharaoh died and went, in, went into hell. Nebuchadnezzar was used to destroy Jerusalem. Because of the sins of Jerusalem. And Nebuchadnezzar could be iffy if he's in heaven or not. Paul is unsaved, persecuting Christians, and will get saved and it will be at the rapture with all those things. Then Philip 
there he is, went down to the city of Samaria. Down, went down a mountain, went down the mountain of, of Jerusalem. And preached Christ unto them. Well, Christ was there with that woman at the well. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those saints which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Miracles, seeing. They're half breed Jews. There's no completed word. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with uh, ugh, palsies, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. The gospel. You want to have a great joy in the city? You bring the gospel, get the people get saved and turn to God. That's how you bring joy. But, great joy in the word of God becomes a but. There was a certain man called Simon, which before in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. So you would have Merlin the magician, the great wonder. The great magician, and put your name in there, came out of the Bible. All these magicians have their names as the great, and they only realize that comes out of the Bible. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Simon according to the people was a godly magician and he used sorcery and bewitchment to take power of the people we'll see how godly this magician is and to him they had regard because that long time he had bewitched them with sorcery he put them under magic put them under spells put them under fear not the fear of the Lord the fear of Simon and his magic but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women turned them away from the magician Philip came in with the gospel and turned the people away from the magician Philip did not join Simon and say, we're going to be magicians for Christ. He pulled the people out from the magician. Acts chapter 8. Then Simon himself believed also. Uh oh, you mean he was a non-believer? Unbeliever. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, behold, the miracles and signs which were done. Wait a minute, I thought he was doing miracles. I thought he was doing something. And he's looking at a real man of God doing real things of God and saying, wow, I can't do that. So we see in Acts chapter 8, there's a difference between magic and there's a difference between God. God and magic are not the same thing because this magician is looking at a man of God saying, wow. You can make a boat or a statue disappear with illusions. You can make it look like you undid yourself from, hand, from handcuffs. But when you've got a pulsy person and you make him walk or do something that he's never done a day in his life, now that's God. Don't call it magic. And the magic was being used to bewitch with sorcery the people who were unbelievers and they did not become believers until Philip came. The magician did not bring them to God even though they thought he had the power of God. You make people think you got the power of God through your magic, you're deceiving them. Acts chapter 8. Say whatever you want. I'm reading from Acts chapter 8, King James 6, 11 Bible. 
It took Philip and the Word of God for these people to get saved. No Philip, no Word of God, they're dying and going to hell. With the magic. You know what the magicians did in, in, in the book of Exodus? They turned Pharaoh's heart away from God each and every time. Read it. When the magicians did the same thing that Aaron did, when the magicians did the same thing that Moses did, Pharaoh looked at it like, oh, oh well, see you later. Go back and study it. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, behold, the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem, the apostles stayed, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Peter's already been to Samaria. They're half breeds In the eyes of Peter, you know, they're... He'll go, but he's, he's going reluctantly. John, he's going, let's go. You don't see no prejudice with John. Only prejudice you see against him and with him and James one day, Lord, those Samaritans didn't believe. Oh, gonna, fire, you want to get some fire down to these people? You want to turn them into marshmallows? And you wonder at this moment, you guys are needing Samaria. You want know, John is like, oh, yeah, okay, let's go. And Peter's like, what's wrong, John? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Keep my mouth shut, Peter. Let's go. Well, you know, they're Peter, let's go. Because I got an opportunity now to. And it would be, wouldn't it be just interesting if this is the city that Jesus minded to go to the cross and they rejected? That's God, you know. John, you really want to torch him? Yeah, yeah, let's torch him. Now, I'm not saying, but it is Acts chapter 8. I want you to go back to those people. God does that. When you open your big fat mouth, God will say, okay, fine. You're going to live what you just said. I've had that happen to me many a time. I told God I'll never go to Florida. God said, okay, fine. Fine. I'll get you down there if I got to see you to get you down there. Who... When they were come down from Jerusalem, Jerusalem's a mountain, down. You might have a problem with that. Because Samaria is north, Jerusalem's south, but Jerusalem's on a mountain. And they go down the mountain. When he comes, they'll be going up. When they come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, look at Peter, he's praying for them. He's on fire, he's excited. For as yet he was fallen, for he. He, the Holy Spirit, he, feminists don't like that, he, the Holy Spirit's a male. He was he was fallen upon none of them, the Samaritans. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Aren't you glad that's not your salvation? These people got saved, but they never received the Holy Ghost yet. I got the Holy Ghost the day I was saved. And not only did I get the Holy Ghost, but I got the adoption to be God's son. Now, do you see the trans, the transportation we're seeing through the book of Acts? There are people who are getting saved and not getting the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It comes after salvation. Now, don't you think I could start a modern church today and preach out of this? And throw the rest of the book of Acts out the window. We're dealing with a different kind of people. We're dealing with a different location. We're doing something newer. Persecution has now set in. One man has become a martyr in the church age. The first martyr has spilt his blood for the word of God. Things are changing. God has slowly turned that dial from the Jews to the Gentiles. Saul is a Hebrew name. Paul is not Hebrew. So, then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. No one laid hands on me to be saved. No one laid on his hands on me to get the Holy Spirit. By belief, by my heart reaching out to God to be saved, the Holy Spirit, okay, here I am. 
In that moment when I confessed all my sins and I became a child of God, clean, Holy Spirit walked in my heart and said, wow, this place is clean because of the blood. I'm welcome here. Now, I don't know how long after I got saved that I, I started sinning. In that moment, I, I believe the moment that someone receives Christ as their Savior and pleads the blood of Jesus Christ, I believe you're completely sin. Even if you don't know what sins you've committed, you are washed in the blood. Are you going to tell me because you forgot to tell a lie, you forgot about the lie you stole about the cookies, the blood will cleanse everything but the lie about the cookies? Absolutely not. That moment you put your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ, you are sinless. And then how long it took after you got off your knees, after you repented? We're all sin. All have sinned coming short of the glory of God. That's why 1 John 1, 9 is in there. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Hey, ten bucks, can I have that? You see in the back of this this magazine, uh, if I send in five five ninety nine, I can get... I've seen the magazines. I've seen the Christian magazine. Get your ordained papers, get the spirit, get whatever you want. Send in $7.99, $8.99, whatever, how many $99. Just send in it. Saying, give me also this power. When verse 10 said, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. He wants the power of God. He had no power of God with his magic. So don't come to me as a Christian magician saying you have the power of God. Acts chapter 8 says, the magician said, I want that power. The people said he had the power, but he proclaims, I don't have the power. You want to fight with me? No, fight with God. Don't want to like me? That's fine. Pick a number. I don't know what number I'm at. People don't like me anymore. Because of the word of God. That on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Now you see, he wants that power and authority over the people again. If you don't do what I you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm not gonna lay my hands on you, you're not gonna get the Holy Ghost. The same kind of stuff that he's done before. There is no creature, new creature in this guy at all. And guess what? Didn't it say he was baptized? Did it say he believed? You want to ask Peter what he thinks about him? A man that walked and talked with Jesus for three and a half years. Jesus said, here, here's the keys. Go use them. Go strengthen the brethren. You love me? Go feed my lamb. Do you love me? Go feed my sheep. Do you love me? Go feed my sheep. Peter, what do you guys say about it? But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Imagine a Pope saying that today. He ain't no Pope. He walks at this witchcraft guy and says, Get your money out of here. No cash, no check, no money. Or get out of here. Get out of here. Thy money perish with thee. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in should not perish. Peter, how are you using that word there? Simon's not saved. Even with the baptism and even with the belief. The heart has not been changed. You don't believe me? No, let's read on. Let's read on. Let's read on. I've been saying all through the Gospels. We're going to see Peter now. Thy money perish with me because thou thought that the gift of God. Wait a minute. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Oh, there's another gift of God it's called the Holy Spirit. Now, let me ask you a question. What gift have you ever received as a true gift that you paid for it? My mom, Christmas time, would go out and buy herself presents in the name of my dad. But that wasn't really a gift. 
didn't come from my dad. It's not a gift. So Peter said, listen, the Holy Spirit's a gift. You don't pay for it. So people think they'll buy their way into heaven. Acts chapter 8 says, absolutely not. Good preaching, Peter. Peter has ruled out money will get you into heaven. So let's read some more. Because you thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. You can't buy the gift. The gift of God is Jesus Christ. Eternal life. You can't buy it. Thank you, Peter. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Watch. Watch. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. There are people who believe. There are people who have been baptized. But their heart has not been changed. Neither has been changed. With the mouth confesses man in salvation, with the heart man believes on the righteousness. You got to have your heart in it. There are people who got saved because for that girlfriend they got saved. They got saved because of mom. They got saved because the preacher made them. I believe someone got saved because their their grandmother made them. Well, I believe, but that's not salvation. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Heart condition. Now watch what Peter tells him. Repent. He never repented. You need to repent. He did not repent. Repent and heart change is needed for salvation. Thank you, Peter. Therefore, imagine a Pope ever preaching this message. Therefore, of this thy wickedness. Ooh. Ooh. Thinking you can buy your way into God's gift is wickedness. Thank you, Peter. And pray God. And perhaps the thought of thy heart, not the head, the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond tied up of iniquity. This guy is not saved. Thank you, Peter. You know what a pope would have done? Give me some money and I'll, I'll, I'll extravagate you of your sins. Come, come with me in the closet and tell me what you've done. And I'll make you say a few little prayers. And you know, Peter is no pope. Peter is no Catholic. He says, you're going to hell because your heart ain't correct. You have not repented. And if Peter ever came alive again, preached on the street today, they would not recognize him. Repent. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, in the bound of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. There's your Catholic. Here's your Catholic turning to Pope Peter saying, Will you pray for me? Remember what Judas did? This is exactly what Judas did. He went to the priest, threw the money down, and said, I have sinned. And the priest cannot do nothing for you. Peter cannot do nothing for you. You can pray all you want to the Pope. This is not the Pope. You can pray all you want to Peter. Peter ain't going to do nothing for you. He can't. He's dead. He's asleep. He can't hear you. Pray ye to the Lord for me. That none of these things which have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, look how look how Simon just falls off. Once he has rejected God, Peter says, Okay, I'm done with you. Let's move to the people who are listening. Peter told this guy, I ain't, I'm done with you. I'm going to turn to people who will listen. People have accused me when I speak, man. Oh, you won't listen to me. You won't talk to me. No, because you don't want to hear. You don't want. All you want to do is cause controversy. You go on your own. Someone else may want to hear. Don't interrupt. Simon's done. He's gone. And preach the word of the Lord 
returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages in Samaria. So now they're going back and forth between Samaria and, and Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Samaria. They're preaching the word. And the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Old Testament, spoke or spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go to the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now look at verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Philip, I want you to go down to the desert now. <laughs> Really? You know what a desert is, Lord, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I know what a desert is. Go. And he arose and went. Wow, look at that. He goes. And behold, a man in Ethiopia. Now, it does not say an Ethiopian. Of Ethiopia. Okay. And eunuch, surgery, man, birth, either of three, of a great authority. Wow. All right, let's stop right there. He's got a great authority. This guy is no slabby guy driving a slabby chariot. He's probably well dressed, he's probably got a train. Cadence, the queen of the Ethiopia. So he is under the royal, the royal rulership of this nation. Who had the charge of all her treasure? Now, I didn't say he was rich, but she was rich. And as the authority under a queen, she, he's not going to be sloppily dressed and sloppy, you know, not able to talk and stuff like that. This guy, is, he's got some prestige. And had to come, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. This guy is an apostolite to the Jewish people. He heard about Jehovah and became... Sammy Davis Jr. did not do what the Ethiopian eunuch did. This Ethiopian went three times a year. Like the Jews were supposed to, like the law said. So he comes to worship, and he, there's only one thing to worship in Jerusalem. The God of Jerusalem, the God of the temple, God himself, Jehovah was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet so he's worshiping he's reading the Bible well knock me over now I guarantee if you ever seen the scrolls he's not he does not have the entire scroll of all of Isaiah so the scripture on paper work What's going on in Acts chapter 8? We don't know how much he... Well, he's got Isaiah. He's got Isaiah 53 somehow, some way. And he's reading it. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Free will, Philip. But go. And Philip ran thither to him. Ran to him. Philip has no idea what's going on yet. We're going to see this. But the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, Go, there he is. Philip starts booking. And heard him read. He's reading the Bible out loud. How's that? The prophet Isaiah and said, Understand thou what thou readest? This guy is seeking. He's worshiping. 
guess what? He's reading the Bible. He's seeking. And he said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. Uh oh, he ain't looking for angels. He says, I need a man that need to come and help me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which was read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shears, so open he not his mouth. Well, isn't that an interesting place? The Ethiopian eunuch has a man of God sent to him, and he just happens to be reading Jesus Christ standing before Pilate. So Isaiah 53, according to Acts chapter 8, is about Jesus Christ. The Jews don't believe that. The Jews don't read Acts. They don't read the New Testament. But the Holy Spirit of Jehovah has told us, going to tell us in this chapter, Isaiah 53 is about Jesus Christ. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. He was declared innocent three times, four times, five times, six times. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. He was killed. And the eunuch answered Philip. And said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet. What we just read, 32 and 33, the Ethiopian eunuch is reading to Philip out loud. I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself? Or some other man, he's like, he doesn't care how many animals got in the ark. He doesn't care where Cain got his wife. He, who is this man I'm reading about? Is it Isaiah? Or is it someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. So you can pick up Isaiah 53, which I do often and preach on the streets. Jesus Christ. And preached unto him Jesus. A gospel track will work. If it's got scripture, it'll work. It's got the word. But notice what we hear before we get this guy saved. Look what he has. He has the word. If you don't have the word the day that you were witnessed, I'm going to call you the question. I'm going to call you the question. And as they went on their way and came onto a certain water, the Ethiopian unit said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? So he's got to know something about John the Baptist and what John the Baptist had done. Another place found in Isaiah 30 or 40. 39 or 40, forget. That's not too far from Isaiah 53, is it? What does hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was baptized them. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot something, didn't I? Let me read you a note I have here about chapter thirty, uh, chapter eight, verse thirty-seven. Schofield Bible. The best authorities omit verse thirty-seven. So when I skip verse thirty-seven, if you ain't got verse thirty-seven, you got the wrong Bible. And I have changed many men in the prison from their perverted Bible to King James Bible. Now, I just read to you, he believed Jesus and got baptized. He will die and go to hell. If your salvation relies on Acts 2.38 or any form of baptism, infant, or whatever it is, sprinkled, immersed, dip, if that's your salvation, you'll go to hell. Correct us, Philip, please. 37. Well, let's go back to 36. See here? Here's water. 
Here's the Church of Christ. What does hinder me to be baptized? Here's the baptismal pool. What hinders me? All right. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thy... Don't you see salvation is a heart condition? So what does hinder me to be baptized? You've got to believe with your heart. Thou mayest. And watch. Now this is omitted from modern Bible. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You've been over there to 1 John where they take out the Trinity, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Have you seen Bibles where they take that out? Somebody does not want you to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Somebody does not want you to believe that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Somebody wants you just to be baptized. Because you better get wet now because you ain't going to get no wetness in hell. Notice the belief, the heart, and Jesus Christ. Which Jesus? The Son of God. Got to make sure. Paul told, Paul's going to tell us later, as he's killing Christians right now, he's going to tell us later there's another Jesus. And he commanded uh, the Son of God. That would rule out the Jesus Christ who's the Son of God who has a brother named Lucifer. That would rule that out. And he commanded Cherit to stand still, and they went down both into the water. After the belief, after the heart, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was bapt and he baptized, went down both into the water. Philip put him under. They didn't have a splashing contest. And when they were come up out of the water, out of the water, okay, baptism, out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. That the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So guess what, what happened to this eunuch? Baptism can't save him. Going to the temple to worship Jehovah could not save him either. It had to be the heart condition of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to be saved. Then baptism. And this guy goes back to Ethiopia, he's rejoicing. Now, if he's truly saved, which I believe he is, he said with the heart, with the heart man believes in the righteousness with confession of the mouth. Now I'm low on that one. Don't you think he went back to Ethiopia and preached the gospel and said, here, look at Isaiah I got. Let me tell you about this guy in Isaiah. So now the word of God is on his way to Ethiopia. You know what Ethiopia is? It's a place of Ham. Africa is now getting the gospel. When you turn the black man from Jesus Christ, you did him harm. Why is there much trouble with, with, with the African American, wherever you want to call him today? Because he's absent from Jesus Christ. But Philip was found at Aestos, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. And you just imagine that little thing. Ethiopia is standing there. He's in the water. Philip's going. Now Philip's, in the, Philip's back in the city again. He's out of the desert. He's back in the city. God may call you in that desert land. For whatever reason he has you need but he may put you right back right where all the people are again and because of Philip's obedience the gospel is now going to Africa and when you talk to an, a missionary in Ethiopia they will tell you about this man some will even tell you what his name is but uh, Ethiopia has a history of the gospel and it comes from out of Acts chapter 8 How's that for belief? Oh, how do you know the Bible is real? Take an airplane flight, go to Ethiopia and ask anybody about Acts chapter 8. 
And you'll have a testimony, the Word of God, that Acts chapter 8 really happened. How's that? Now go to every house in the 50 states of America and tell me how many people literally saw Santa Claus. Well, what's wrong? I can go to one country in Africa and say, hey, yeah, Jesus Christ, he saved us. He's alive. He, he, his word came here. And no one's ever seen the real Santa Claus. Well, guess who I'm going to believe? Guess who a judge would believe in a courtroom? The witnesses. <laughs> 